on this second Sunday of Easter. I am Deacon Carey. Pastor Karen is gone for continuing education this morning, and so we are joined by Pastor Kurt Rowland to preside over communion for us. We have two additions to the prayer list um, this week. Um, the family of Heidi Mercer's nephew has passed away, and then also the family of Doris Blake, um, a lifelong member of our Savior's Lutheran Church, passed away this week and her funeral will be here on April 20th at 11. We begin with worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. 
We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through Jesus Christ, our source of living water in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. I invite you to rise as you are able for our opening hymn. We are called. We are called. We are claimed. We are claimed. We are loved. We are loved by the holy name. We are healed. We are healed. We are whole. We are whole. The Savior ransomed our souls and we're singing. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. We are here to proclaim. To proclaim. God is here. God is here. Each by name, we are here, we are here to give praise, to give praise. The love of God will not change, and we're singing. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, oh, 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 oh. glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, oh. we are called, we are claimed, we are claimed. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to be seated.
Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. I see some stricken faces. I'm not here to talk budget. I'm just the reader. I come in peace. <laughs> the first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. While the apostles testified to others about the resurrection of Jesus, the early Christian community shared what they owned or sold their possessions to help their fellow believers who were in need. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from the first letter of John. The opening of this letter serves as a reality check. The reality of God is light, but our confessed reality has been sin. God cleanses us from our sinful reality through Christ's death so that we may live in fellowship with Christ and walk in God's light. We declare to you what was from the beginning what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us all from sin. If we say that we do not have, that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is, atone he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also the sins of the world. The word of the Lord. I invite any children who are here to come up for the children's sermon. Good morning, good to see you. Okay, I have something hidden behind my binder here, and 
the question is, can you guess it? Can you guess what I have hidden? Any guesses? What if I show you the bag it's in? So now you kind of know what size it is. It's pretty small. What do you think? A rock, that's a good guess. Candy, that's a good guess. Charlie, you have a guess? Well, okay, take out your finger. You can touch it, okay? Don't use your eyes to look in there. Just take your finger and touch it to see if you can guess what's in there. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, look. Good job. I picked a hard thing. I didn't want it to be super obvious. A bracelet. Any other guesses? A tiny action figure. Can I show you? Yes, I can show you. Are you ready? What is it? It's a little cat. You didn't guess. That's okay. This is a little cat. Do you want to hold on to it for me? Thank you. It's just a porcelain cat. So in our reading today, Jesus comes to his friends, and one of his friends isn't there when he comes back. So Jesus has died, and he says, look, I'm alive. Uh, I didn't stay dead. But one of his friends isn't there. And so his friend tells all of them, you know what, I'm not going to believe that Jesus is really here unless I take my finger and I can touch his hand. And I can take my finger and know that it's really Jesus. So what does Jesus do? Jesus says, okay, I'll come back and I'll show you. Because even if we can't see him, even if we can't touch Jesus, we know that Jesus is always there and Jesus is always going to come back to us. And Jesus works through us and we can touch and help each other with our hands, right? So when you go out, we'll pray first. But I am going to ask you, when you go out there, to give somebody a really big hug or a high five or something with your hands to show that you're with them. Can you do it? Anybody you want. Sound good? Do you know who you're going to hug? You think about it. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for always being there for me. and loving me no matter what. Help me to love like you do. And all God's people say, Amen. Thanks for coming up. I'll take that back and go give a hug or a high five to somebody. <laughs> Please rise if you are able for our gospel acclamation. shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. 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 Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but they are written. These are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the source of life, healing, and forgiveness. Amen. I have a question to open with. I won't have you turn and talk to a neighbor about it, but I hope you do take some time to really think about it. My question is, what motivates you to do courageous things? Maybe think back to the last courageous thing you did a time where you felt scared or nervous, but did it anyway. What motivated you to take that step? For me, I feel like I can do a lot of things if someone is going with me, even if it doesn't go perfectly. If I have someone to share it with, I don't feel as much pressure. Um, like the thing isn't as heavy if two of us are carrying it. I also then have someone to keep me accountable and make sure I actually do the courageous thing. Maybe you like to prepare to practice whatever it is that feels uncomfortable. Maybe you talk through it and name what's holding you back in order to just logically lessen the power it has over you. Or maybe you center yourself in your values or goals so as to really cement your reasons why it's important to do something that feels scary or intimidating. Because it's normal to feel fear. Fear is a very natural human emotion that we are all allowed to feel. The disciples sure felt a lot of fear throughout the Gospels, as well as in the first sentence of our text today that opens with the disciples hidden behind a locked door out of fear. And Thomas soon gets thrown under the bus because of his conditions that he sets in his fear mindset. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark and my hand in his side, I will not believe. To me, I think that sounds like a fear to hope. He's almost begging for the words to be proven right, but he just isn't quite able to risk believing it yet. And I notice also that none of the disciples are written to have really empathized with him. All they say is, well, we've seen the Lord. <laughs> Maybe they hope that he's just going to figure it out eventually. But they do keep him. It's significant that he's not thrown out or declared as an enemy. They don't call him names or judge him. Thomas is still with them the next week when Jesus arrives again. Jesus is the one who truly shows up for Thomas in this story. Jesus is willing to meet Thomas exactly where Thomas says he needs something. Jesus responds with, okay, put your finger here then, see my hands and believe. And while it was really important to Thomas before, the text doesn't tell us that Thomas ever does touch Jesus. It seems as if Thomas just needed Jesus to be with him in his fear in order to understand and trust that the resurrection had happened. Being willing to meet people wherever they are, in any level of health or social standing, is common practice for Jesus. Jesus sets the example and loves anyone, then says to love one another and to love our enemies. And yet, our world is still divided. Being willing or unwilling to meet people wherever they are is an area where Christianity receives a lot of criticism today. There are entire populations of social identities based on race, on age, on 
gender identity and ability and immigration status and religion, entire populations of people who name that there are inequities and a history of hurt that still affect them today. And we have a choice, whether we hope they figure it out on their own or show up when they name, name that need. The Gospels have multiple resurrection stories like today's, and Jesus reveals himself in several different ways to different people. He appears as a gardener to Mary Magdalene outside the tomb. He appears as a regular traveler on the road to Emmaus. Christ is revealed in ordinary, unexpected people who we might not know or recognize. In Matthew, Jesus says that anytime we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the prisoner, welcome the stranger, we feed, clothe, visit, and welcome Jesus. While we can't put our fingers in his hands, we can see, hear, and touch the hungry, the stranger, and those in need, those ordinary people like you and me who have been created in the image of God. We can show up with our hands for God's work in the world. There are so many who have not been accompanied well in their struggle and in their fear, people who do not have the support of family or of resources. Just like Jesus shows up for Thomas, Jesus sends us to show up for others. And sometimes I find myself worried that me showing up for someone has to be this big life-changing gesture, but really all Jesus does is come back to the house. Jesus holds out his hands to someone who needs reassurance. And I think we can handle doing that. Who might God be calling you into fellowship with right now? Who needs reassurance? It may be your family, a friend, a neighbor, a stranger. Who can you courageously show up for and reach out to today after you've walked out these doors? I had the opportunity to meet with one of Eau Claire's newest residents, a young woman who's a writer and has written stories of her refugee experience. My second job at Jonah includes doing communications and we're going to feature some of her stories um, in our next few newsletters. And her writing is courageous. She is driven and genuinely wants to do her part in helping to create a world that is full of possibility for all people no matter their journey. And she has pinpointed her gifts in the way in which she can best do that and show up to advocate for others across the world, in her case, by sharing her stories and her values and her honesty in this way. Likewise, you have been equipped with gifts that are needed by your neighbors. You may be a writer, you may be able to provide food, you may have time to offer friendship. You may have the flexibility to share resources. However you share your gifts, Jesus sends you to show up for others, to forgive and to welcome, to trust when God says, so I send you. God's sending is worth the fear that we may have about it. And no matter what, Jesus Christ is still with us along the way. I invite you to continue pondering what motivates you to do courageous things in the face of fear and to use that to show up in love and fellowship for someone this week, whether that means calling and telling someone you love them, sharing your story to advocate for justice, joining our team that's going to partner with a refugee family, or giving in some other way. Let's go out in good courage. Uh, I have a favorite prayer called the Lutheran Prayer of Good Courage. Would you please pray with me? Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able for our hymn of the day, number 384.
Let us confess our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially today for Glenna, Lyle, Vanessa, Shelby, Lloyd, Diane, Maury, John, Deb, Marianne, Barb, Hudson, Zoe, Gary, Heidi, Wendy, Emily, and Mike, the Schuler family, and the family of Doris Blake, and any other names spoken aloud now. God of grace. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff administrators and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship and all <coughs> worship over the year. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. We pray for the well-being of the members of this congregation and community, especially today for Karen and David Bailing, for Karen and William Bijan, and for Chris and Rodney Bentz. God of grace. Accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to turn and share a sign of God's peace with one another. As you finish, you may be seated for our offering, our special noisy offering in the globe this month is going to Agnes Table.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true God. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. <clears throat> Amen. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God and all are welcome. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Crown of thorns placed on his head. He knew that he would soon be dead. He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? They nailed him to a wooden cross. Soon all the world would feel the loss of Christ the King. He formed his alleluia. his head and prepared to die then lifted his face up to the sky 
said, I am coming home now, Father, to you. A reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips. He drank his last and gave his soul to glory. crown and wrapped him in a linen gown and laid him down to rest inside the tomb. The holes in his hands, his feet, his side, now in our hearts we know he died to save us from ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Today, following the 9.30 a.m. worship service, join Kurt Rowland for the Education Hour in the Fellowship Hall as he starts his two-week series on the city of Jerusalem. He will cover 5,000 years of history in that city over the next two weeks. Grab a treat, a cup of coffee, and join Kurt in the Fellowship Hall following the 9.30 a.m. service. 
We only have four Wednesday educational evenings left and would still like to invite you to join us for our midweek meal. If you haven't come yet, we would love to see you there. The meal is served from 5 to 5.45. You are invited to join us for the meal and stay for fellowship. The food is great and there's no cost for the meal. <laughs> Members and friends of our saviors are more than welcome to join us, not just the youth. The meal for this Wednesday will be pizza. Then, to cap off the midweek year, we will once again be holding our carnival on Wednesday, May 1st. This will be from 4 to 7 o'clock and is open to everyone, so please invite your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, friends, and neighbors to come and join us. There will be fun games, prizes, inflatables, balloon animals, cotton candy, popcorn, and a hot dog meal included. There is no cost. Just come, join us, and have fun. Coming up on Friday and Saturday, the Lay School of Ministry from the Northwest Synod of Wisconsin will be meeting at Our Saviors like they have for the past several years. This weekend, they will be having a Resource Center book giveaway. The books will be available on Friday afternoon, April 12th, from 3 to 8 p.m., and on Saturday, April 13th, from 8 to 11 a.m. Totally free, no donations necessary. You will find the books in the narthex. On Wednesday, April 17th, the deacons invite you to join us once again for a coffee break. This will start at 2 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall, and you are welcome to come and join us as long as you would like for coffee, tea, water, hot chocolate, soda, or whatever you would like. Come and join us for great fellowship and conversation. On Sunday, April 21st, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., we will be hosting a tie-dye extravaganza to help raise funds for the youth who will be attending the National Youth Gathering in New Orleans this summer. You just need to bring a cotton item to be tie-dyed, and we'll take it from there. You can be as hands-on or hands-off as you would like. We will provide all of the instruction, dyes, equipment, and support as you would need. Suggested items to bring are t-shirts, dishcloths, pillowcases, canvas shoes, or anything else as long as it's white and is 60% cotton or more. It will tie-dye well. We hope to see you there. Thank you to everyone who has shown interest in the Good Neighbor Team and in partnering with a refugee family this year. We only need a few more volunteers who would be willing to help for a couple of hours a week over six months. Specifically, our team could use people who could help with transportation around Eau Claire to medical appointments and grocery shopping, people who could help with budgeting household income and expenses, people who are familiar with the school system, people who have any level of French language skills, people who can help with job searching and practicing interviews. If that sounds like something you are able to help with, our team would love to have you. Let Deacon Carey know. On Saturday, April 27th, we will be looking to get a group of members together to help clean up the churchyard following the winter. We will be gathering at 8.30 a.m. and looking for anyone to help, but would love anyone who could bring trailers, rakes, trimmers, hedge pruners, or anything else to help get the yard ready for the nicer weather. If you have any questions, please see Maury Elkin or another member of the Buildings and Grounds team. Finally, we are once again collecting items for Lather with Love. We are partnering with the Chippewa Falls Mission Coalition to help those in need as we collect shampoo, hand soap, dish soap, and laundry soap to stock up the shelves of local food pantries. This is an urgent need, and all soaps will be equally distributed amongst area food pantries. There are boxes in the narthex for you to place your items into, and the collection goes until April 30th. If you would like more information about these or any of the other happenings that are here at Our Saviors, please refer to our website, our Facebook page, the current edition of our newsletter, check with a member of the staff, or grab a take-home sheet from the Narthex. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able for our sending hymn. Oh, 
from his throne unto his own. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. to the other side. 